Hello and welcome. The Magnus Protocol is here. And I know we talked about doing batch episode reviews, and we're probably still going to do that. But I can't just not talk about these first two episodes that have come out today. By the time you're watching this, it's probably tomorrow. But today, I have to talk about I just got done listening to them both twice. There's a lot in there, and there's a lot that is definitely set up that doesn't have payoffs yet, of course. But I took detailed notes and i want to run through my thoughts on these two episodes first shift and making adjustments there's a really wonderful thing right at the start here that i want to mention which is that uh alexander j newell talks about how at the very beginning of the first episode hey if you haven't seen everything else you can still start here you absolutely you haven't read all of the wikis and you haven't listened to the magnus institute the magnus archives multiple times that's okay don't have to have watched and listened to all of the first series to start here. However, definite callbacks and definite interesting ties already that make me very, very excited. And having to wait every week now when I got to listen to the episodes without any delays because I got into the Magnus Archives after it had just finished... It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough wait. It's already been a tough wait waiting for the season. It's gonna be a tough wait waiting for the episodes every week. So I'm really glad we got two to start it off. I don't expect that to continue. I expect we're gonna get one episode a week, but I had to talk about them. I couldn't just not talk about them. So let's start with first shift. And I'm gonna keep these spoiler light because I know that some people might not even be interested in checking this out until we talk about it a little bit. But I should also probably give a preface of what is the Magnus Protocol. What is the Magnus Archives? Um, I'm just excited. So you have to bear with me. The Magnus Protocol is a podcast series that is a horror audio drama, almost uh, with a lot of intrigue. It is an audio drama, but it, it's done up almost like an old radio play, except it is uh, done up in the style of a podcast where every week we're assuming you're going to get a new episode that will have more new adventures that everybody's going on. And I say adventures very loosely because most of the time they're very bad things. Uh, but in the Magnus archives and in the Magnus protocol, it is statements. It is things that have happened before that our new cast is finding out about. And I'm really excited to get into these statements here, but I need you to understand there are a lot of things that you might struggle with fear wise that will be mentioned in this series. Most likely it was mentioned just about every fear I could think of had an episode about it in the Magnus Archives. Um, I have a fear of statues. That happened. That That's episodes where that's the thing. So keep that in mind going forward that it might be worth checking out some of the incidental information in the description. And whether or not it's an episode you want to watch. But so far, I loved every single episode of the Magnus Archives. And I've really enjoyed these first two episodes of the Magnus Protocol, and I can't put it off anymore. So let's talk about first shift. We get introduced to our team here, and I really like this team. It's interesting to me that right as Teddy's leaving, Sam's coming in. I don't know. I'm, I need to not spoil everything from Magnus Archives here. I'm going to say this now. We're going to give a brief overview of the episode, and then we're going into full spoilers from Magnus Archives as well. Because I feel like most of the people that are watching this also watched Magnus Archives and they want to talk about it. So we're gonna we're gonna just give a brief what did I think? These episodes were really good. I really like this cast so far. I think that the way the statements work with Freddy are really cool. Uh the way the classifications are done up seems important. And I wrote down all of the classification numbers. I tried. I need you to understand that I did my best to convert them into letters, to convert the numbers into letters, because I thought it might be a code, and it still could be. I could just have the wrong cipher. Using the standard number to letter converter, I was not able to, that conversion chart at least, I was not able to come up with a sentence that made sense. There were a couple things that were kind of interesting, uh, but I feel like there's definitely a code there. I just don't have the right cipher yet. But I know those are important, so I'm going to be writing all of those down for every episode as I move forward here. Uh, I would love for all of you to also include notes in the comments, things that you picked up on that you thought were important, 
because I will then add them back. And then maybe at the end of the season, I'll put out like a link to the whole thing and everybody can, can go back and view it and see anything. And it'll be a whole aggregated thing. But anyway, I really enjoy the setup here. I think the idea of using the old PC that's running on pre windows 98, right? That is, Definitely not broken and definitely doesn't have the voice of very familiar people coming out of it with text-to-speech that probably shouldn't have existed when that computer was made. I love I love this podcast so much. Uh, there's two stories in this one. And again, we're, we're still in the not spoilers for Magnus Archives yet because I, I do believe there will be people that will jump in with protocol that have not yet listened to Archives. But there are two stories here. And the first one is kind of a heartfelt tale of regret, right, of of grief, and very much horror. Uh, if you don't know anything about the Magnus Archives, probably doesn't ring a lot of bells, but definitely was unsettling, right? And the second one is very much, hey, this is weird, even if you don't. I love the way it's laid out through the forum posts. And all the different responses, and you get each one of those read out by Jonathan Sims as well. But if you know, <laughs> ooh, buddy, I strongly encourage you, if you are starting the Magnus Archives with Magnus Protocol, you've got time, right? We have weeks upon weeks upon weeks of episodes coming out. You should probably go back and watch the Magnus Archive. It feels to me, two episodes into the Magnus Protocol... Like it's going to be important. So, episode two, making adjustments. Uh, also, Colin, just real quick, Colin pointing out in episode one that he knows something is listening. We're going to come back to that when we get to full spoilers. Um, making adjustments, also a really fun little episode. And I say fun because the content matters. Horrifying, but also because... It feels like Magnus Archives, man. It just made me feel like I was back home again. I was all wrapped up in my, my warm blanket of horror. And <laughs> I just wanted to hear more. And ultimately, it is very clear to me that the writing has not degraded. I did see some people in the comment section on my reviews being like, yeah, but now they've hit their, their, their peak. Who knows? It's probably just going to not be as good. I don't think that's true. We're only two episodes in. But this feels right up there for me, especially when you get to the twist of the artist is now working on herself instead of on the painting. Ultimately, I like these characters a lot. I like the show a lot. That's as far as I can get without talking about ties. So we're going to go back now to episode one with full spoilers, which is now on screen for the Magnus Archives. If you have not yet watched the Magnus Archives, go do so now, please. Thanks for watching. Okay. So, right away, the wine is there. The distortion is there. The same way that the tapes would distort, the distortion is there. That... But this time, it sounds like a PC taking off. Like It sounds like a PC that has just booted Crisis or Skyrim for the first time, and it doesn't know what to do. I love it. It's such a great little detail. And it comes up in some really interesting spots, when they're talking about Freddy, when they're talking about Norris, Martin, Chester, John, and Augustus, who, who? We'll get into that in a minute. And also later on, whenever they're talking about the Magnus Institute, whenever Sam asks about it because of the second statement, kicks up again. There's definitely some stuff going on. And what we knew before was that that was a fear looking like that was the eye looking or, or some other distortion of powers being used right something's happening Colin knows it's there he knows they're being listened to I'm assuming that's why Teddy was able to get out however it seems like and I could be very wrong here it seems like getting into the office of incident assessment and response somebody has to go or somebody has to come in for you to be able to go out that's what it feels like for all I know, Teddy died to sleep as soon as he left. I don't know, but that's what it feels like. Everything I say right now is pure speculation. But, man, I love to speculate. 
Uh, so let's talk about CAT two RC one one five seven dash one two oh five two zero two two dash zero nine zero one two oh two four the animation. Uh, classifications are really interesting here, and like I mentioned earlier, I want to hold on to these because I feel like they're important. The fact that Gwen Bouchard hammers home how important the classifications are means we need to pay attention to them. I don't know yet why. What I do know is it's important, so I've written all of them down. Reanimation is a really interesting classification, too, because it means they know that this is a thing that happens. And there's a comment from Sam later on where he's like, hey, you know, I was just, you know, when she, Alice sees Sam looking into the Magnus Institute and warns Sam off, saying that she has seen people go wild. Weird. Sorry, seen people go weird. I had to get to my notes to make sure I had the right word on this job. They ignore this stuff because they don't want to think about it because if they think about it, everything starts to unravel because reanimation is a classification they have. There's a really great line in this one. The shadows hide whatever it was that took him away from me. But the creature here that used to be her husband, or at least part of some of her husband, as the voice says, some of him, uh, is discolored skin, moves strangely and it seems like something's inside the skin and whenever it laughs its head rattles back and forth so fast that it seems like everything's shaking and breaking loose and she hears the snapping of bones i want to immediately be like oh it's this fear or it's this fear or it's this entity i don't think it's just one it could be the shadows hide whatever it was that took him away from me as just a uh, that she's who knows what goes bump in the night, right? But I think instead, it's like a combination. Like they've bled into each other almost. And I'll get into that again in a little bit. But it almost feels like a mix, right? Of the dark and the stranger and flesh, maybe? It's, it's really hard to say, but it definitely feels... There's a little bit of the lonely in there... It feels like a mix, right? I love it. I absolutely adore it. The idea that, and I could absolutely, again, it's all speculation. I could very much be wrong. But the idea that they're all like blended in together. I love it so much. So we get a little bit of other stuff here. And again, I'm not going to go into every detail in these episodes. Uh, I don't want to just be here forever rehashing the episode to you. You really should just go listen to it yourself if you haven't already, please. Uh, but the second one, and there's a couple other little things I do want to mention, but the second one is CAT 23RAB 2155-100420222-0901202-4 formation. I got the the category there from the description that wasn't listed in the but the description has been really good before about mentioning names and things like that even if they're not mentioned in the episode so i always check the descriptions i checked the transcript because i wanted to be sure so this is a forum thread that's being read off and i didn't even mention martin before so much to talk about here a forum thread that's being read off by the voice of jonathan sims and the first one was read by the voice of Martin Blackwood. Who is Augustus then? Is it Elias Bouchard? He was the only other one in the Panopticon with him. Is it his assistant? Who? I mean, Augustus would imply, but who knows, right? So excited. Uh, so, just the idea, too, that, like, hey, at least they get to be together in... A computer i'm okay with that if that's what it winds up being i feel like there's more to it but if that's what it winds up being um maybe they're the voice of the fears who knows um voice of the fears man oh i didn't even think about that before i just said that before that thought just hit the back of my brain and raced to the front this is a forum thread about a user named red canary that is going into the ruins of the Magnus Institute after the fire 
20 years ago. And they have a hard time uploading pictures. Uh, they think there's some distortion down there with the camera. They took a box. They took an old wood box covered in symbols out of there. And the hair rose on the back of my neck when it happened. The hair rose on the back of my neck when I said it. Because I, that box has to be the one that came out of the table, right? It has to be. And then, you know, there's some back and forth over the course of 20 days of trying to get more information here from Red Canary and Red Canary having a hard time talking about it, saying the third floor looked like it was destroyed, but the archive looked like it might have been okay. And then... All of a sudden, you hear the phrase, Canary should stay above ground. And there's an image that is posted and removed by moderators that is gore, and somebody says they can see eyes, and it just breadlocked my moderator. I love this series so much. There's a couple of little things I wanted to mention in episode one as well, uh, because I mean, that, that feels like the flesh, right? That feels like the flesh got her turned her into something, but is that also the stranger? If they're mixing like my theory, then who knows, but let me know your thoughts. I don't just want to run with my theory here and be like, Oh, this, this is what's happening. This, this is all just speculation again, but I wanted to call out that again, Colin knows something's listening it's not a tape this time it's the pc or multiple pcs because it was teddy's pc his machine that was still picking up on them at the party colin says that the system is written in some german source code there's a really funny gag here of like why would going to germany help because colin's focused on source code feel like that detail is going to be important. I feel like that's going to come up again later. My first thought was Robert Smirk, but I don't think he was German. I don't, but you know who was, who I hadn't thought about until just now, Jürgen Leitner. That's going to be important. That's, that's going to be important later. I don't know why, but that's going to be important. That leads us into episode two, and I'm sure there's things I missed in episode one, little character interactions that I didn't mention. I do really like this cast. So far, I think that Alice and Sam have some really good interactions, especially seeing as there was some history there. Uh, I think that Gwen is really interesting so far. Lena is odd as a boss. I don't know how I feel about her yet, but we'll get there. I like Colin, and then, of course, Teddy has stepped out of the picture. But I really like Sam. Sam is the... He's got a little bit of the eye in him, right? Of whether he knows it or not, of I can't just let this go, This this thing matters to me and I have to know more about it and I don't know why it matters to me but it does and that leads us into episode two making adjustments uh, which is CAT 3RBC 1567-2309-2022-180120 and again that may not seem important to anybody but me but I'm gonna keep checking on them because it matters to me and this one is also classified transformation uh, that makes sense to me that it would be. I don't I don't know what else it would be other than transformation. But the other transformation, not a very good one. And I do think it's interesting how close the classification numbers are here for the two transformations we got so far. But they are not the same. They're both... They both have 1202 in them, right? 12024. But... 0901202 and 1801202 is that the classification for transformation and then this is just the number of it or is it something else why is it that the previous transformation statement with the ruins by Rick Canary is CAT23RAB and this one is CAT3RBC that may not matter to you at all that matters to me that's going to be important for some reason Sam may have a hard time wrapping his head around these classification numbers. Gwen may have them down. She missed a couple, but it's fine. I'm going to get them down too. Probably not, but I'm going to try. Uh, this one is really interesting. The switch from the artist 
working on the painting, working on themselves, is really, really good. And I mentioned earlier in the non-spoiler section that it felt like I was home again with the Magnus Archives. This was very much the kind of statement that would come through in the Magnus Archives. But it's told in a very different way here of Daria, this artist, to a therapist over the phone. So it feels like this is an audio file that's being played uh, in the O-I-A-R. But I had to make sure I got that right. Uh, but I love a lot of the little details here. The The tattoo parlor is called Ink Soul, but with a five instead of an S. The, the person doing it is a live streamer and... Daria has no control over her body as soon as she's put in that chair. The live stream is egging them on. There's definitely something going on there. And this could be new fears that we had before. Been 20 years in the timeline of the world, right? But where this one really stands out to me is the, the moment when Daria says that after all of her adjustments, and I'll get into that in a second, but after all of her adjustments, the tattoo began to spill out melted out the the colors from the tattoo began to out of her body definitely something paranormal going on there right something anomalous but i really like the the sudden shift i mentioned it of you know she worked all night to get that painting done and when she got up there were a couple little things she wanted to fix but they weren't on her and she mentions it's just little things, extending her feet a little bit, uh, extending her fingers a little bit, changing her mouth, changing her neck, just little things, right? Giving a bump here or there, but she's physically altering herself to be able to try to match this painting. Almost like a, a weird take on a Dorian Gray story almost. It was really, really good. And I think it's only bettered by the ending of it where you have her roommate Sarah gets back home early. It's not actually early, but she feels like it is because she's gotten so wrapped up in her adjustments. is isn't noticed. And her roommate Sarah punches her. And the thing she's upset about is not that she punched her, that she upset days of work with all the touch-ups that she'd done for her mouth. And I, I love this idea of, like, she doesn't realize how messed up she's become. So she's desperately trying to hold on to Sarah to convince her that everything's okay, when in reality that probably was absolutely horrifying for sarah then you have the reveal at the end when the therapist is like well you didn't use the acid to try and hurt yourself right it's like no it was never my goal to hurt myself the therapist says, oh that's great if i was if i'd wanted to clear the canvas i'd have used turpentine which means she absolutely was using acid she just wasn't using it to hurt herself it to improve herself I loved it. It was a really, really good story. Absolutely felt at home in the Magnus Archives, right? Institute and Protocol. There's some really interesting little stuff here, too. Uh, Alice and Gwen talking about Lena outsourcing their work. Gwen thinks that Alice wants to, re or that Lena wants to replace them. Alice does not agree with that. And then Alice gets a phone call from her sibling, Luke, who is going on tour with a band called Dredgemon also feels like it's going to be very important. And then, of course, after that is when we get the moment where Sam is still trying to look into the Magnus Institute because we know it's been a week now, and even after a week, he's still thinking about the Institute and the ruins down below. At some point, he's going down there, and I'm really curious what it's like now. I'm curious if when the fears were pulled... If every because we know the not them got destroyed, right? Uh, ceases watch your gaze upon this wretched thing. But what about the other stuff that was in the archives? What about like all of those old artifacts they'd picked up that might still have some relevance? There's there's a lot like the box, right? The old wooden box. There's a lot that seems important and. I really like these. I'm probably going to listen to them again next week when the new episode drops. Just listen to all three. Uh, I've been going for like 25 minutes already for two episodes. I love the Magnus archives. I love the Magnus protocol. And I hope 
that if you have not, if you listen to all this and you have not yet listened to the Magnus Archives, I hope that you do. Uh, because I'm really looking forward to this. And again, we talked about doing batch episodes. We talked about doing individual episode releases. We'll see. I might do individual episode releases once a week and then just do like a big catch up at the end of the season. Who knows? We'll see how I'm feeling. But I couldn't just not talk about these first two episodes. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, let me know what I missed. I've been Trey in the full spectrum. And remember to always enjoy the full spectrum. A Magnus Protocol has to offer. <laughs>